Today I'm going to show you how to set up your Linux computer or Windows computer to script using Swiftforth or GeForth. In the previous video, I showed you how to install it, and that's good if you just want to uh, get up and running. But if you want to go a little further, this download actually contains uh, a few additional things that are in it. So go ahead and download this again, or you can follow along if you previously have it on your computer. But anyway, you're going to get this file and unpack it. And we have additional uh, files in here that are useful. For example, sockets and TCP IP. So this is useful if you want to create a server or a TCP client in Linux. And I'm going to show you that in the next video after this. So that's why I, I kind of have to cover this first. And in the previous video, what I had you do was to go back here into bin. And we went into Linux and we moved this into the directory of user uh, local. bin and i had you move that file right here so if you have this file uh, you can remove it and what we're going to do is instead of moving that file that sf file here we're going to if you have it previously installed there you can remove dash f or i believe you have to do this using sudo and you're just going to delete that file if you have it there from the previous video so so yeah just remove that file if you have it installed or you can just follow along and I'll show you how to set this up so all we need to do is basically get this file and move this folder into the user local bin so basically open up a terminal navigate to downloads folder and you're going to type in, you know, sudo copy dash R, I think means recursive. So all the folders within the folder and subdirectories. We're going to copy the Swiftforth folder to the uh, user local bin. And that should be it. So once you've done that, you can actually go to CD. And you can see we've got Swiftforth, so we can navigate and we've got pretty much all our files and folders in there. So after this part, I'll show you how to add it to your .bash RC um, folder path. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add Swiftforth to our path. So you're going to navigate to your home directory. And then after that, you're going to type in sudo vim bash rc i'm using vim uh, you can use nano if you want to so after typing that in you should have this file with some stuff in it i'm going to navigate to the bottom and at the end of the file you're going to have you're going to add these three lines first line is just you're setting your editor to be vim and you can set it to nano or whatever text editor that you use. Again, this is going to set our visual to Vim. And this is also going how we set our path. So right here, um, we're going to set our path to user local bin. And we're going to set Swiftforth uh, bin Linux. That's the folder path that contains our SF binar binary. So once we set this path, we can execute Swiftforth from anywhere. So if I type SF, I should get a prompt like that. And if you want to double check this, you can type in echo and you can actually echo out your path. And what you should see here is, um, should see this folder path right here which is the correct uh which is the correct path to our binary 
So after that, you should be able to type in SF from anywhere in the file system, and you'll be able to run Swift forth. So if it doesn't come up for you, let me know, and I'll tell you how to fix it. So to script using Swift forth, what you need to do is just, you know, open it up. And one of the first things you need to know is to get your bearings. So Swift forth comes with a word called PWD which will just output the directory you're working from. And this is important because you need to know uh, if you're creating files, what path you're in. So for example, I can run this command include, and I can type in something like, you know, test1.f, and it'll say file not found. Well, we haven't created that file yet, so from Swift forth, we can actually type in touch, we can type in test1.f, and can pipe that out to the shell. So now, if we run include test1.f, we'll get a different error. We'll get something like can't read the file. Well, that's because we haven't put anything in it yet. So what we can do is type in edit, test1.f and it will immediately open in Vim. So we can just type in something like uh, greeting. And we can save that. So I can include the file again, type in greeting and there we go so you can include your files like that type in by to leave swift forth and you can also type in sf test1.f and it will automatically load that file so you can see that we're still you know in the uh, swift forth uh, interpreter so another thing we can do is maybe we're running this as a cron tab or a task scheduler and we want to run something and then leave. Well, to do that, we can just edit our file and at the end, we can just type in bye. So when we, you know, leave, with, you know, maybe we're running this as a cron tab and so anytime we run this, it'll just immediately load our word and then it will exit. So you kind of have to do, if you want to see this, you can just type in greeting and type in by sf test1.f and you can see that we outputted hello world and then we left and came back to our Linux prompt. So anytime you're creating these scripts, it's important to, you know, do that, to know your current working directory. And in addition, Swiftforth comes with this environment variable. So you can actually type in CD percent Swift forth. And you can see that it's already mapped to that user local bin. So this is going to be useful whenever we work with that TCP IP file. All we can do is we can just CD into that environment variable. Uh, we can go to lib options and we can actually see what um, we can see what this folder contains by typing s quote ls and we can see that we have uh, these files that are pretty useful so that's why i had to kind of cover this because there's a lot of these useful words uh, that are contained in that um, swift forth uh, folder so if we go up a level to linux um, Again, there's that TCP IP file. And I'll be covering this in the next video. So I'll cover how to create 
TCP server using this file. And uh, that's it for this, so I'll get the next part ready. Next I'm going to cover an important word, and that word is called marker. And we're going to also deal with overlays. So I've created this file called sf123.f. And you can follow along. You can type that in. It'll ask you to create a new file. So just click on or type in Y to create that file. But I created this file earlier. And the important word I want to show you is the word marker. I believe you also hear the word overlay. So in this file, I have two overlays, one called untested and the other called experimental. So what these words are is it allows us to kind of mark the location and we can forget everything. We can forget these words in the dictionary. So uh, rather than talk, I'll just show you how these work. So we have the word, you know, this works, this is good, test, test two and experimental or exp and they just do basic things so maybe the experimental word uh maybe this one we're not sure about the behavior maybe we're just you know a beginner and we want to test that out uh, so it does you know what we want it to do but let's say we want to forget that word we can just type in that overlay called experimental and you can see that we no longer have that word in our dictionary, but we do have the other words that were before it and they, they work just fine. So if we want to forget the test words, because maybe we don't know, lo uh, no longer need them, we can just type in untested. And you can see that we've forgotten, you know, all of those words that were after that. But we still have, you know, access to that top level. So, so that's pretty much uh, how marker works. And you'll often hear these called, uh, called overlays. So these are real important for structuring things. You don't have to necessarily call them untested. These can actually be uh, words that are, that, you know, maybe they, they work. Maybe they are words that represent color. And, you know, you can have them structured uh, in this kind of manner. So uh, for the next part, I'm going to show you how to do this in Windows. Next, I'm going to show you how to do uh, all that in Windows. It's a little bit different, but uh, the thing we need access to is this file called sf-cli.exe. Uh, if you're familiar with my other videos, I've shown you this, and this is the GUI version, but this also comes with the command line version, which is similar to uh, Linux. So you can open a PowerShell window or you can open a command prompt and let me shrink this down. You can type in CMD and you can type in sfcli.exe and you can see that we have a similar command line version of Switchforth. The only exception to this is that the words are very limited. There's not as many words but you can still, you know, run things and you can import Windows functions and, but you still kind of have to build on it. So, uh, we still have access to words like our current working directory, which is, uh, fourth ink. And we also have access to the same kind of, uh, environment variables. So if you remember, you can use the percent sign and you can actually CD into uh, that directory. 
So I'm going to actually CD back into uh, the binary directory. And what we have in this folder is this word called mytools.f, which I made um, some time back. And it just contains words like slurp file, slurp, and spew. So if we want to do something similar in Windows that we did in Linux, what we can do is um, we can include that file and we can type in edit my tools. I believe we can get away with not putting the .f and it will open up in our text editor that we've set. In this case, it's just notepad. Um, but you can see that we can, you know, do some similar things that we were doing in Linux. And in the next part, I'm going to show you how to set this so that it can run in any folder. So if we want to get Swiftforth to run in any folder, what we can do is we can, uh, we can copy this command in there. I'm going to paste it in. And once you do this, you should be able to set Swiftforth, the command line version, to run anywhere. So what you have to do after this, you have to close it out and open a new window. And, you know, if I'm in the C directory, for example, I can just type in sfcli.exe. And you can see that I have access to Switchforth. I even have access to the GUI version and I can run it from any folder. And finally, I'll briefly cover GForth. It's very similar to the other two, pretty much. Once you get to, you know, a couple of these fourths down, they're all pretty much uh, similar. So with GForth, you can actually run system commands. So you can type in um, PWD and you can type in system and that will output your home directory. So uh, with the word system, you can run things like, you know, Vim, Nano or any text editor and you can edit your file. In this case, I created this file earlier, so it will bring it up in Vim and you can edit this stuff and you can be brought back into the prompt and if you kind of run untested it doesn't work because i believe gforth uses a different terminology than swiftforth but uh, this is pretty much the same you can you know run vim or any text editor from here and from here, you know, you can type in gforth and sftest.f and you can run things, you know, from the command line and so forth. So this is really helpful if you want to create a script. You can put it in a cron tab or a task scheduler if you're on Windows. And I know I, I briefly covered, you know, just the basics, but it goes a lot deeper. And if you're interested in a more advanced video, uh, leave a comment below. And thanks for watching.